Matthew Hall. I'm here with Dean Stevens. He is the CEO of Healthline. And we were just reminiscing, also was involved in the form, founding of Your Doctor and Intermap Systems, which is what Healthline was before 2004, five, six, somewhere way, way back then. Yeah. A while ago. <laughs> a while ago. A while ago. <laughs> a while ago, yes. We were just saying, you know, Deloitte should be sending you a huge bill now for your consulting fees for the last 15 odd years. Anyway, 20 years now. <laughs> All right. So, um, Dean, some exciting developments at Helpline. Tell me a little bit about, you know, how the company's evolved. Uh, remind people kind of where you guys started a, a few years back um, in both the enterprise and the consumer side. And we always thought you were more of an enterprise company, but that's changing. So tell me a little yeah. bit about what Healthline is doing kind of um, on the media side of the house first, and then we'll talk about the enterprise side. Okay. Well, we, you know, we began the company about 15 years ago, and, and it was really a, an investment in technology. Um, but about five years into it, we saw what was happening uh, in the marketplace around media, health media, and decided to also launch a media company. Um, it was embedded in together with uh, the information technology company, but we that's when we branded it as Healthline. And Healthline.com over the last 10 years has uh, made a lot of progress, and particularly in the last couple of years, uh, we became one of the fastest growing health information sites in the world. Um, so you were kind of known before for, you know, leasing out the ability, especially your taxonomy, which is the, the and the various tools you built off it to help consumers figure out what's going on in health and be better sort of than, than, than Dr. Google. Right. Um, but you were kind of known a bit more for sort of, you know, releasing it out as a SaaS basis to other, to other players like, you know, the Aetna's and the US News and World Reports, people like that. Yeah. But, uh, so is that a deliberate, is it kind of by osmosis or is that a deliberate tactical change or strategic yeah. change you made? Well, you know, the, the DNA in the company was always to try to organize health information in context for an end user. The end user being a member of a health plan or a consumer of a website. And so we've been, like you said, uh, kind of a health search platform for a long time, working with a lot of enterprise customers, but also doing it for ourselves at Healthline.com. Um, that's evolved um, to where now, as Healthline Media, we have been able to um, create a voice and a and quality of information that's been very attractive to both Google and to Facebook and, and other um, places where a lot of people go for community or for information. And uh, that's created uh, one of the fastest growing websites in the, in the world. So give us, some, give us some metrics as to where you were two, three years ago and where you are now in terms of just visits and uh, uh, visitors. I'd say in two years ago, 2013, we were doing about five to seven million unique visitors. That's what, health, that's what healthcare blog level, not a bit more. But. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Well, and, and then about a year ago, we got that up to, uh, I'd say, 15 million uniques. Now we're doing over 30 million uniques a month. These are health information seekers that uh, we have figured out how to keep them um, informed and actually get them to take action on uh, what they're looking for. Right. So really quite quite a staggering process. You imagine that you could create you know such increase this late on in the game, as it were, to me, that's really fascinating stuff. Yeah. So let's it's, talk It's because you Go learn ahead. from other people's efforts and other people's mistakes. <laughs> We did that. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the other side of the business. Um, obviously, still based on that same uh, taxonomy, tax taxonomy technology, but other work you're yep. doing. Talk a little bit about what the enterprise system is, enterprise side is doing, and and how you, what you're what you're calling that, and how you're how you're working. Right. Well, on the information technology side, we work with a number of big payers and some publishers and some of the HIT companies out there to help them with their ability to search that information that they have. But what's happened is that we've watched the market change dramatically from being a, a fee-for-service market now to trying to be a uh, value-based reimbursement or at-risk marketplace. And, and that's exciting to us because now what we can do is apply our search technologies in the world of the provider, basically into the electronic medical record world. Our history has been to understand information in, the, in unstructured data fields, right? These are um, uh, textbooks online to now uh, patient notes in an electronic medical record. Uh, we have taxonomies, but we also have natural language processing and clinical rules. Those three together allow us to mine the information in the electronic record for all kinds of use cases, um, mainly to help um, understand who are the sickest patients in a physician's practice. So tell me a bit about the new product that you launched at HEMS just a few weeks back. Uh, coding insights. What's the yeah. goal? What's the goal behind that? And uh, 
How's that been received so far? Ah, well, Coding Insight is all about um, understanding um, the codes associated with every patient in a physician's practice. And that is uh, what is necessary for reimbursement. And under the managed care changes, we're able to infer um, a better set of codes associated with a patient than what's done through manual chart process or just the physician trying to do that on the fly. Um, the, the impact that this is going to have is really quite substantial. Um, not only is it going to optimize reimbursement for a physician's practice, but it's also going to give that physician insights onto what's going on with their patients that may be hidden in all that information they've collected on that patient over time. So, and tell me a bit about the market acceptance, what you've seen from the, the, the early users and that. And yeah. there's, a, there's a bunch of other players, we, we mentioned them off camera, including Optum and plenty of things, some others who are, who are in that business, yeah. so all folks who are looking at natural language product will wait while the... Uh, San Francisco's finest uh, go past. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, Third Street. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, g- give, give me a sense about you know, how to see so far and what you see for that part, for that product in the business, and then what else you have sort of coming down the pike in that area. Sure. Well, we don't officially launch the uh, Coding Insight application until the end of this month as a generally available application, but we've had early adopters, you know, um, beta customers that uh, have really enjoyed uh, being able to apply this to their practices because one, they can get more reimbursement uh, for the patients that they've missed uh, coding properly, but it also gives them an, uh, a synthesis of what's going on with their patients. So they love the tool, it's easy to use, and, and actually we have a, one customer who's going to embed it into their electronic medical record. And is the EMR or the EMR vendors, are they the most likely channel partners for you here, or are you going yep. direct? Okay, so that. Yep. Think, think about some of the big players in that area, I suspect. Yep. Very good. Um, and then what other kinds of products are you thinking of in that sort of provider and, uh, and payer world around sort of the more nitty-gritty of coding that you can, you know, information retrieval for enterprise use rather than consumer use? Well, you know, when you're able to go into unstructured information and pull insights out of it, you're able to make inferences around what's going on with patients. There's a lot of different uh, risk management applications. Um, we had talked about being able to identify those patients at risk for readmission within 30 days. Um, it's basically because you're looking at medical and non-medical information about that, that patient. Uh, we're looking also at um, working with the pharmaceutical industry and the biogenetic industry because they're sitting on a lot of information and they're trying to get uh, more value out of the unstructured information about the patients that they have in their clinical trials. Sure. So we have one customer in that world. Very interesting. So, a lot going on. Company Canoes Devolve. It's been, you know, you've been with us since before there was AF 2.0, right? So, right. I remember. We've, we, been, we, we've been avid supporters absolutely. of 2.0 since we, the first we, year. Absolutely. And, uh, and we actually met when it was Intermap, or even your doctor, I remember, so way back when, when I was trying to do my startup, which is not fed as well as uh, <laughs> I did. But uh, um, it's been a while. So, so, you said earlier off camera that you've got these two different sides, and they're actually coming to potentially coming two different businesses. Right. Um, what do you, you know, you're sitting around in the city where everyone else is raising ridiculous amounts of money in the private equity markets or a number of folks are going out, you know, folks over Everland and uh, Carlson and others have gone out the door and gone public. Um, you're now making money on the media business. Tell, give, me a, give me a sense of where you think you are as a business and what we can expect to hear on the sort of business side in the next yeah. months to years. Yeah. You, have well, pa- you have patient investors so far, I know. <laughs> yes, yeah, 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 very... Um, happy investors and uh, the media business is growing at, at quite a rapid rate. It is profitable and uh, you know it's got a good template for growth and uh, we're looking in the marketplaces to how to uh, merge that company with others uh, through acquisitions. So we are looking at uh, raising capital to uh, conduct acquisitions in the marketplace. Uh, the HIT business is, uh, is basically pivoting into this uh, risk management world of applications uh, Coding Insight is its first. Um, so we're looking at um, how well that's going to catch uh, later this year, and that may actually uh, um, encourage us to raise capital to fund the growth of those applications as well. So it may, it may end up as two separate businesses, do you think? or are you? I think they're going to evolve as two separate businesses. We actually created them as two wholly owned subsidiaries the first of this year. Um, they're two very different business models, uh, uh, two different um, types of uh, uh, markets within healthcare that they operate in. Uh, maybe they come back together in the future someday, hard to say, but for right now, I think um, having them run as two separate um, subsidiaries will provide us much more options. All right, uh, ex- 
exciting times. And you, the fact that we're able to still do exciting stuff 10 years later is, is pretty cool. All right. We're more excited about the future than we've ever been. Oh, that's great. I'm assuming Dean Stevens, he's the CEO of Healthline. And I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, over the course of the year, Dean. Yeah. Thank you, Matthew. Good to see you again.